Hello children, good morning. How are you guys? How are you? Very good morning, very good morning. Have a good day. Okay children, welcome to session. And today, as you know, in this class, we are going to start with new chapter that is biotechnology and its application, okay? So biotechnology and its application. So today we are starting with a very new chapter. Children, again from, uh, you know, board point of view and uh, your need point of view, this chapter is having good weightage, okay? So as I start uh, discussing uh, each and uh, uh, every concept i'll uh, inform you like uh, what to remember which is very important you need to practice it okay yes so without taking much time let's start the class okay so last chapter that is biotechnology principles and process we know that what is biotechnology right and we know that what are the different sectors of biotechnology isn't it so we discussed about different sectors of biotechnology and principles of biotechnology tools of biotechnology and how to make different products using uh, this uh, you know these different tools and techniques right yes so now let us see where exactly we are making use of this biotechnology. What are you no know, immense applications of this biotechnology in this class? Okay. Yes. See, where all you see biotechnological application, mainly in nowadays, we are seeing the production of biopharmaceuticals, the production of pharmaceuticals. You can see the medicines, drugs, vaccines. It's no, it's wonder like even in India, we develop a co-vaccine, co-visual within very less uh, time span. Okay. And we also having so many medicines, drugs, which are, you know, launching every day in market to treat uh, several diseases and to manage several medical conditions. And also we have, you know, uh, developed uh, genetically modified microbes for our benefit and we are manipulating the uh, fungal genome for our benefit we have genetically modified plants we have genetically modified animals right so yes what why we all doing we we are doing all this for the betterment of mankind for the betterment of mankind yes so the main applications of biotechnology includes therapeutics okay diagnostic diagnostics in diagnosis of several diseases how we are going to use this biotechnology you know best example is we have rt pcr right in last class also we mentioned yes it is also a biotechnological part and also we have genetically modified crops you know like bt cotton golden rice yes and processed food so, uh, children see uh, during seasons we get enough 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 amount uh, you know a good quantity of mangoes okay but we we should keep that mangoes and their products throughout year available in the market right for that we have processed food uh, like you know jams jellies squashes concentrated fruit pulp and all these are processed food right so by uh, processing food we can you know preserve them and avail throughout the year isn't it Yes. Hello, children. Once again, welcome to session. The, those who are joining now. Okay. And we also uh, use biotechnology for bioremediation, like, you know, treatment of waste um, materials and also energy production. We know biodiesel. We are producing uh, fuels using organic materials, uh, like, you know, um, cakes of seeds, uh, neem cake and pongamia cake okay we are also trying uh, to make biodiesel out of growing some alga and all right so these are all the different application of biotechnology yes so the mainly let us start with you know uh, sector wise applications of biotechnology in agriculture and then we'll discuss its application in medicine and then we'll discuss in uh, different sectors okay so now let's begin with uh, applications of biotechnology agriculture.
agriculture children whenever we hear the word okay uh, agriculture the first concept comes to our mind is increased food production right so always in agriculture sector we need to consider this fact because in world population is exploding like anything to meet the demanding uh growth of food worldwide only only possible solution is agriculture to increase the uh, crop yield to increase our yield to meet the uh, demanding required for food right yes so now question arises okay we need to increase food production but how how what are the options we need to uh, increase the food production in agriculture how to increase our crop yield okay first thing you know use of chemicals okay give uh no sorry give a um, lot and lots of chemical fertilizers okay so such that plants can grow quickly with all essential nutrients and you get better yield okay chemical fertilizers or use sprays you know chemical sprays like pesticides insecticides and all right yes such that insects and pests can be killed and you get better yield and but but children look at the other side of course using chemical fertilizers you can improve the crop you can using uh, pesticides you can protect your crop but look at the other side it's leading to pollution right it's leading to pollution and use of enormous chemicals in food is not at all good for your health also right because one or the other way this chemical is entering our body right so first thing it, it's leading to pollution of what it leading to pollution of soil water and environment right and also it's not good for health so then we should look for some alternative method one safe method but still it should improve the crop yes so second uh, uh option what we have is organic culture we in organic culture we don't use any chemical fertilizers we don't use any chemical pesticides right we prefer organic manure you know compost made of dead and decay uh in materials like you know wormy compost we prefer wormy compost right and we prefer what is a green manures like manure made of all green uh, agriculture waste right green manures we prefer green manures okay and spray also you know uh organic sprays like pesticides and all we go for organic sprays nowadays you might have heard about you know panchagavya the spray which is made of you know cows uh, urine cow dung uh, jaggery and all right so panchagavya is best example uh, and also we have some other organic preparations to control pests to control insects and also we are preferring wormy compost green manure and natural waste to put uh, plants as fertilizers to get better yield but children this organic culture is very safe okay and quality of food also very good in organic culture you are getting good quality but thing is that farmers are reluctant to follow this uh, method because because it is slow organic effect is slow say for example if a farmer start using organic compost this year in his farm okay he needs some time to you know show its effect on the soil on the crops okay and most of the farmers you know they require quick not it's not fault of uh, farmers okay it's uh, because it's a pressure on them to supply uh, to the market at best price right yes so uh, due to many uh, several uh, financial factors and lack of awareness and all this organic culture still in not much practice and though we follow organic culture we can't expect you know best in like when we use chemicals we get better products but not the best so we want safe along with best so let us see what we
can do for that. See? Genetically engineered crops. What do you do? You take plants, okay? Modify them, genetics, and make them grow better and get more ill. Okay, see here, there are a few plants where, okay, uh, now imagine a tomato plant, okay? One of the species of tomato native variety was giving only one branching or two branches. So if less branching, you will get less tomato, right? Because less flowers, less possibility of yield. So if you make your tomato plants branch more, yes, you can get more early. Okay. And also, and also children, the size of the uh, vegetables. See, apple of this size and this one. See, which one is better? This one is better, right? Size wise, look wise, shape wise. Yes. So, this is how we increase the plant yield by modifying by modifying their genetics you know how to modify genetics you know you know how to modify take the desired gene from plant say for example there are two plants one grows in drought condition and one grows very well in water condition so now i want to make my uh, plant which is growing in water can also should also grow in less water content so what i do i'll take the gene from drought plant which is growing in drought condition and put into this plant so whenever there is scarcity of water even this plant can tolerate drought and give good yield right yes so this is how we can use genetic engineering okay uh what can we do in plants by modifying their genetics by modifying the genetics what can we create what type of plants we can make okay let us see we can make crops more tolerant to abiotic stresses see sometimes there will be more cold okay less temperature more drought less water condition sometimes in soil in soil there will be more salty condition or high temperature okay so we make plants to tolerate these conditions by introducing some some these stress tolerant genes into them okay as i mentioned transferring gene from drought resistant plant to good yield one so now your good yielding plant with high uh, amount of water and all when it faces some drought condition still it gives good yield okay and also we are de uh, we develop pest resistant crop see we are going to discuss this how we develop pest resistant crops like earlier days former need not to spray you know of uh, chemicals on the food crops or any of the agriculture crops so now we have made the plants resistant to res uh you know insect or pest how you know we took some gene which makes toxins okay it's very interesting no so we took genes of toxin from some bacteria or fungi okay and then we inserted that gene into plant now the gene which is making toxin is in plant cells right so whenever the insect or uh, you know pest comes and start eating the uh, plant that toxin will kill them the toxin will kill them okay now you might be having question ma'am if that plant kills insect or you know pest why don't it affect us right are you getting this kind of question in your mind children therapeutic means drugs medicines medicines beta yes so are you getting are you getting this kind of question pest resistant crop i said yeah ujai very good see pest resistance we are making the plants to produce toxins and here you know the toxins which are produced in plants are specific towards insects not towards man specific specific for pest so it is not at all toxin for humans it's toxin only for pest okay in that way we have chosen the toxin 
okay yes and you know help to reduce post harvest losses what is this post harvest losses beta best example is tomato see once farmer grow tomato once it ripens farmer cannot keep them in plant right so he has to pluck it and he has to sell it so when he get more and more tomatoes on same day definitely market price is going to fall so to avoid this what he can do after plucking tomato if you slow down the ripening time if you slow down ripening process so he can keep it for one or two day right so then he can sell it for best price so preventing post harvest losses means slowing down the ripening rate okay slowing down the ripening rate we can increase the price for the product we can prevent the spoilage of food right yes <laughs> this is how we can make a uh, use of biotechnology here also and also increased efficiency of you know minerals increase efficiency say for example this is there is a plant okay and that plant requires some some five grams of fertilizer every day okay but you had put to the roots or to the soil you have put some 10 grams but still this plant is not able to pick up all the nutrients available it is possibly taking some one gram due to some constraints in uptaking mechanism by the roots so now what i make i will improve the uptake mechanisms uptake proteins in the roots by genetically uh, engineering genetic engineering method such that the plant can utilize if i'm applying five grams means five grams of fertilizer here plants will uptake all nutrients okay such that such that soil fertility will increase See, unnecessarily i am not adding more fertilizer and whatever is available will be taken up neatly okay will taken up neatly and also it gives soil a breathing time to replenish its nutrients again right so this is how we can increase the mineral usage by plants and also you can increase nutritive value of food so for example children how we can increase nutritive value daily you are eating a bowl of rice which is rich in carb only okay yes how if you get vitamins also in that rice yes what we did we took gene for vitamin a vitamin a gene from you know uh, the vitamin rich uh, food producing plant and put it into rice plant put it into rice plant okay now your rice is also producing vitamin as a result you get uh, you know orange color rice you know we call it golden rice that's why it's called golden rice have you ever seen this golden rice in market children have you ever seen the golden rice in market yes so golden rice yellow color rice okay yes so these are you know possible ways to uh, make genetically modified plants for the betterment of mankind okay yes so i told you, you know let us see uh, one by one what are the important applications okay yes first we will see pest resistant plants pest resistant plants how we made the plants which are uh, you know resistant to pest yes I told you, uh, we have taken a toxin producing gene from some microbe and put into bacteria, right? Let us see what it is. Okay, see, the toxin is called Bt toxin. The toxin which we put into plants, 
to protect it against insect is called bt toxin bt means you know it is isolated it is pr uh, produced from a bacteria namely bacillus thuringiensis in its abbreviation form we have kept the name as bt toxin okay yes now what we did see this is a bacteria which uh, bacillus thuringiensis assume this is bacillus thuringiensis from this bacillus thuringiensis we have taken the gene which codes for bt toxin which codes for bt toxin so this is bt toxin gene now what we did we constructed a, we constructed a vector and we inserted this bt gene btg so this is a vector okay now btg that is zero of interest and vector both together become our dna right yes so now we transfer this to plant now at you know at seed stage we transfer this to plant at embryo stage or seed stage okay yes now as the seed germinates and become a plant each and every cell in this plant is producing this toxin now okay now what happens insect comes to yes children bt means bacillus thuringiensis very good okay yes uh now let us see what happens here how the uh, toxin is killing insects see this insect is coming toward the plant as soon as it starts shaving that leaves a plant part any of the plant part it will die earlier see it was made, doing party with by eating the plant but now after injecting or inserting that bacillus thuringiensis toxin gene into plant it's not eating at all okay so using this mechanism we made more many and many more and more pest resistant plants using same bt gene see we have bt cotton where we have taken bt toxin gene and put into a cotton plant we have bt corn we have taken bt gene and put into corn plant and we have rice pest resistant rice tomato potato soybean and on okay so now all these crops most of the crops are pesticide re pest resistant so now these crops are naturally protected uh, by pest which are eating them right yes so now see how this uh, bt toxin is killing the insect the mechanism see children this is uh, the toxin gene right yes so it makes the toxin bt toxin this bt toxin is in crystal form beta okay it, it it will be in crystal form now as soon as this toxin enters the digestive system <coughs> i'm sorry i'm having cough as soon as these crystals of toxins in the leaf imagine this is a part of leaf of a plant so here in the leaf bt toxin is producing pro protein a toxin is a protein which is in crystal form as the insect chewing the plant leaf any part of the plant that toxin crystal enters the digestive system of insect inside the digestive system the insect digestive system is having alkaline ph children remember alkaline ph inside the inside the digestive system of insect we have alkaline ph now this alkaline ph activates can you see here the crystal form of protein to toxin form crystal form of protein to toxin form now this toxin form of a toxin can easily bind to the receptor on the membranes of in intestine of insect see it's easily binding once they bind it will start to rupture the membrane digestive tract of the insect as a result insect will die okay clear children what is making the insect die 
once that crystal of protein enters the digestive system of the insect the alkaline ph inside the digestive system see alkaline ph okay so this alkaline ph is activating your crystal into toxic form and this toxic form can easily bind to the receptors on the intestine can you see here and then it results in the rupture of the cell cell disruption as a result that insect will die is it clear children okay you want me to repeat the diagram yes see okay let me clear the diagram first this is imagine a leaf or any part of the plant okay where it is producing toxin this toxin will be in crystal form as the insect start chewing the plant part the toxin enters the the crystal protein enters the in digestive system of in, uh, insect right see this is digestive system okay yes inside the digestive system of insect we have alkaline ph means base condition right we have alkaline ph you know ph changes the protein structure right yes here this alkaline ph in the intestine converts the crystal form crystal form is actually inactive form beta okay crystal form is inactive toxin crystal form toxin is inactive toxin so to make it active this alkaline ph will you know do some modification in its structure and make active toxin and activate the toxin okay so now once the toxin become activate you know it can easily bind to the membrane intestinal membrane of the insect can you see this is intestinal membrane of the insect where it is having receptors so to the receptors this toxin easily bind and once it binds it start you know breaking the membrane of intestine by breaking the cells so as a result the insect will die the insect will die is it clear children is it clear pooja bablu yes hi hello madhu is it clear now okay so shall i go to next very good thank you so much for your response yes now i was telling you about bt toxin genes right yes there are three different types of genes and these genes are called cry genes cry genes these are i also type bt toxin genes only okay you know a gene may have different avatar alteration alleles right yes so here cry genes are also bt genes there are three different types of cry genes why we call cry cry refers to crystal form cry means crystal we discussed it right crystal yes so there are three types of cry genes children ha 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 okay okay beta yes so cry 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 means crystal okay we have three types of uh, cry genes namely cry 1ab cry 1ac and cry 2ab children this is very 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 important you need to remember for both your board and need this is very 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 important cry 1 1ab cry 1ac and cry 2ab okay cry 2ab now let us see cry 1ac gene and cry 2ab gene makes toxin pro proteins which control a pest called cotton ball worms what are these cotton ball worms see this is a image of you know cotton twig cotton plant twig and this is cotton ball this is good one 
full mature cotton ball this is you know immature and cotton ball inside this you know fruit like structure still cotton will be developing at this stage this cotton ball worm first will make hole will start eating it now see if you, if the pest makes a hole or start eating that egg fruit of cotton can you expect cotton can you expect cotton no so it will result in loss right because no no cotton yes so to prevent this what we made we injected we injected cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab genes to the cotton plants bt cotton okay in bt cotton plant what genes we have we have cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab genes okay now whenever that uh, ball worm comes and start eat this cotton balls it will die the moment it bites it will die as a result we get at the end we get good crop good yield right isn't it children yes yes both are same beta both are same okay now the third uh, cry gene is cry 1 ab this gene from bacillus thuringiensis we have isolated this gene and inserted into corn plant to make bt corn what is the use of this gene see to the corn plant there was a pest can you see here this insect it was boring it was drilling that corn can you see here see how it's drill what do you have aapko kuch dikkat hai is slide pe children okay no let us see see the corn cobs okay if if an insect start making bore you can see poor yield right because it will it will be spoiled you don't buy this okay so to prevent this what we did we have taken cry 1 ab gene and put it into corn plant to make bt corn so cry 1 ab controls corn borer remember cry 1 ab controls corn borer 1 ac and 2 ab for cotton ball worms cry 1 b 1 ab for corn borer children this is very important you should remember this slide the names of three genes and uh, their importance okay okay yes so shall i go to next slide yes children so far we discuss making pest resistant plants using bt uh, toxin gene right yes so here now we are going to discuss one more method of making bt uh, sorry pest resistant plants okay here we are discussing one more method here we are going to discuss one more method of making pest resistant plants okay clear children okay thank you for your response yeah rna interference rna interference method okay so let us see what is this rna interference method and how it will help us to make pest resistant plants clear yes so let us see first we'll understand 
uh, what is RNAi? RNAi means RNA interference. No. So first, let us understand this term. What it means. What this technique is, and then we'll apply the technique to make pest-resistant plants. Done. Okay. Come. RNA interference. Okay. In RNA interference, we'll take a piece of DNA of our interest. We'll take a piece of DNA of our interest. Okay? Yes. What type of DNA I'm taking? I'm taking DNA which is making RNAs in future. Upon expressing, it should make RNA. In future, what it should make? It should make RNA. Yes. And what type of that RNA it should make? This RNA should be complementary to the. This RNA, which is made from a gene of interest, should be complement to what? To mRNA. mRNA in host cell, a specific insect or pest, pest specific mRNA in the host okay yes so now i'll take this gene of interest which makes rna and i put it into thai plasmid this is thai plasmid what is thai plasmid children come on answer me thai plasmid what is thai plasmid tell me in last chapter we yeah, how it works, we'll see. That is the beauty. <laughs> Tell me what is type plasmid? Children, tell me what is type plasmid? I'm waiting for your answer. Don't know. You're saying don't know. Yesterday uh, we discussed, right? Tumefacients, agrobacterium tumefacients, children. You forgot that? Agrobacterium tumefacients, type plasmid is a plasmid which we obtain from agrobacterium tumefacients, right? Agrobacterium tumefaciens. We use this bacteria plasmid to make genetically modified plants, right? Type plasmid. Don't know? Yes, tumor inducing, tumor inducing plasmid, right? Very good. Children, see from now onwards, if you don't, oh, you can't see me. Oh, sorry, by mistake, uh, I touched on it. Okay, sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, see? Very good. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, Madhu, I'll make some trick for you from next, okay? Yes, definitely. I'll uh, whenever you, you just let me know in chat box wherever you're feeling uh, difficult to remember, I will help you out. Okay. Yes. So this type plasmid, I'm injecting the gene. Okay. What is this gene? What is this gene? This is the gene which is specific to pest. 
Say, for example, we have nematodes, nematodes, no nematodes, ascalmanthus, okay? See, so these nematodes, okay, these nematodes are, you know, uh, very much dangerous to some crop plants like uh, uh, tobacco and all, okay? So now what I do, I will take a gene of interest from nematode. I'll take a gene from nematode, which is specific for nematode, okay? Yes. Let us see what will this DNA from nematode will do in future. That is, I'm going to explain it, okay? Just understand, this is gene from nematode. This is nematode specific gene. What it is? <coughs> I'm sorry. This is nematode specific gene. I got to know through chat box what difficulty of facing. That's why I'm writing in detail, children. Listen carefully. This is nematode specific gene. I took it from a nematode who is pestering my crop. Okay. Yes. And now I put that nematode specific gene into type plasmid. And transferred this type plasmid to plant cell. I transferred the type plasmid to plant cell. Okay. Now, what happens inside plant cell? Let us see. This type plasmid will start expressing inside the plant cell. That means our gene. Nematode specific gene. Okay. Shall I write nematode specific gene as short form? N S G. That is the same time. Yes. Nematode specific gene inside the plant cell now. Inside the plant cell started making RNAs. RNAs. Both the RNAs means sense an antisense RNA means both the DNA strands are getting transcribed to RNA. Sense an antisense. Sense and antisense means complementary, right? Double stranded RNA, right? Yes. So now your double stranded DNA, double stranded DNA of nematode specific gene transcribed to RNA transcribed to RNA. See, this is DNA. This strand will transcribe to this and this strand will transcribe to this. So now you get two strands, sense and antisense. Sense and antisense, right? Sense and antisense means complementary to each other. This is sense strand and this is antisense strand. Assume this way. So now they are complementary with each other. They are complementary. Can you see? Red is facing towards yellow. Red is facing towards yellow, right? Yes. Now, now, to this double stranded RNA, till here, it's clear, children. Tell me. Till here, it's clear. Till here, it's clear. No. Shall I proceed to next step? Quick response, please. Thumbs up, please. Yes, thank you. See, this double stranded RNA, okay, will be now bind to a dicer. Dicer means chopping protein. This is a dicer. Dicer means chopping protein. It will chop something. Where it binds, it will chop. Now, see, this dicer. Chopped your double stranded RNA into fragments. Can you see here? Yes. So the dicer binds to double stranded RNA and chops it. Yes. Now to these chopped fragments, to this chopped fragments, okay. Can you see here the chopped frag fragments? Yes. These chopped fragments will unwind. Unwind means they become single-stranded RNA. Can you see here? 
they become single stranded rna after chopping by the dicer the double stranded rna become fragments and un unwound un unwind okay unwind to become single stranded rna yes this is rna okay now this single stranded rna will bind to a protein complex see single stranded rna plus protein complex this purple one is a protein complex to make a complex called risc risc risk complex what is this risk rna induced silencing complex i repeat i repeat the single stranded rna combines with some protein complex to make rna induced silencing complex rna induced silencing complex okay now what is the function of this rna induced silence complex see this is your nematode specific rna right yes so this nematode specific rna along with the other enzymes now chopping the mrna of insects nematodes can you see here this is mrna of nematode once nematodes start you know eating the plant okay now see mrna of insect will be chopped once mrna is chopped insect cannot make protein so it will die it will die okay now see i repeat i have taken a nematode specific gene from the pus nematode and inserted into type plasmid transferred it into plant cell now the plant cell is expressing the gene as a result you are getting double stranded rna when you have single sense and antisense rna right so now the sense and antisense rna will be made separate single stranded with the help of dicer enzyme so once they make fragments they become single stranded rna and combined with other proteins to make a complex called rna induced silencing com complex so what what it does this rna induced silencing complex will be there in the plant once the insect or the nematode start eating the plant this rna induced silencing complex will now enter insect cell or nematode cell where it will chop the mrnas of insect so there is no translation process taking place in the in their cell there is no protein synthesis because your rna induced silencing complex is silencing the protein synthesis right silencing the protein synthesis silencing the mrna of insect how it is silencing by cleaving it once mrna of insect is cleaved it's silent it should be silent no job there is no further translation right so from this rna now there is no translation that means no protein making no translation means no protein no translation means no protein so it won't survive so this is how we exploited this rna interference technique in plants to avoid pest to avoid some nematodes especially we use rna interference technology to make the plants to protect against nematode nematode resistant plants is it clear children okay beta let me know where, where in which uh, step or which word you are not understanding i i try to tell you in hindi you you people want me to repeat this again one more last time or is it clear now tell me clear okay beta uh, for those who didn't understand some complex english lines here 
आई एम ट्राइंग टू मेक इट वेरी सिंपल सी ए टाइप्लास्मिड है ए टाइप्लास्मिड को हम काउंसिलियर एग्रोबैक्ट्रियम ट्यूमिफेसियंस राइट यस यस आई एम कमिंग देयर ओके सो इन टू विच वी इंसर्टेड ए निमेटोड स्पेसिफिक डीएनए ओके यस सो नाउ दिस टाइप प्लास्मिड कैरिंग निमेटोड स्पेसिफिक डीएनए विल बी ट्रांसफर्ड इनटू प्लांट सेल नाउ दिस डायग्राम इज happening inside the plant cell imagine now this double stranded dna will code for double stranded rna okay double stranded rna in double stranded rna both are complementary to each other no so whenever two uh, nucleotide sequences are complementary to each other we call one as sense and another as anti sense a sequence right is yes. here also one sequence i am giving it as sense and another i am just calling it as anti sense strand of rna now you have double stranded rna okay yes so inside the cell to this double stranded rna a protein called dicer dicer protein will bind so this is dicer protein the main function of dicer protein is to cleave this double stranded rna can you see here the long strand of double stranded rna here is now become small fragments once it becomes small fragment it will you know separate now it is in uh, you know double stranded form right like this now after cleaving it will become single strand like this can you see here single strand single strand to this single strand okay it will combine with some more protein some more friends okay some more protein friends to make it complex what there is what what it is there single stranded rna along with some protein friends and this complex is called rna induced silencing complex i am writing in full for you guys rna induced silencing complex silencing complex so what it means why it is called silencing complex is the rna in this silencing complex will be there in the plant once it enters the nematode upon feeding upon biting by the insect once that nematode eats the plant cell now with this okay this complex will go and bind the nematode mrna because see this strand of rna what we got is from nematode dna right of the transcription is it 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 is specific for nematode rna mrna so now this will go and bind to nematode mrna and start chopping it start cleaving it in the nematode cell so once the nematode mrna is become you know fragment you cannot expect that mrna to make proteins right so in the insects then in the nematodes then there will be no protein synthesis as a result as a result the mrna of nematode get silent who made silent our rna complex made it silent hence it is called rna induced silencing complex rna induced silencing complex this silences the mrna so now now this technique is interfering with rna right this technique is interfering with nematode rna if this technique is made the nematode rna non functional hence the name rna interference interfering with the rna of nematode okay risc rna induced silencing complex rna induced silencing complex this complex upon entering the nematode cell after it, uh, being eaten by nematode it enters the nematode cell where it chops the this risc chops the mrna of nematode and makes it silence means it will destroy mrna of nematode as a result the name 
RIS, the RNA induced silencing complex. Yes. So as this technique interfere interfere with the RNA of nematode, we call it as RNA interference technique to develop pest resistant, especially nematode resistant plants. Is it clear, children? Is it clear? Okay, so go back, go back, do revise this concept and come back with doubts, okay? Yes, very good. Okay, this is a favorite time. Let's do some quiz based on today's class, okay? Yes, tell me. First question is, Biotechnology deals with industrial scale production of biopharmaceuticals. Biopharmaceuticals, children, means, you know, obtaining medicines, drugs from organisms. Say, for example, antibiotics, penicillin, tetracycline, okay, and your uh, vinegar, acetic acid, and all. They are from cells and biologicals means other products from cells using genetically modified organism, right? We use only microbes to obtain this or do we use fungi, plants and animals, all of the above? Yes, all of the above. Puja, you're telling option A. No better, not only microbes. <coughs> We use fungi also. Fungi also a micro, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, though it is multicellular, we use fungi. You see, fungi are, you know, good source of metabolites. Most of the, uh, you know, uh, medicines, what we are using, the antibiotics are from fungi. You know, penicillin is from fungi. Acetic acid, we make acetic acid from fungi. We make citric acid from fungi. Okay, fungi, good source of metabolites, children. And we use plants and animals, see? Plants and animals are also good source of uh, biomolecules. We are using all these uh, cells to get the biopharmaceutical products and biological products. So, answer will be D. Clear? Okay, next question. The crops having cry genes need the crops which are having cry genes in them. No insecticide is required. Mild quantity of insecticide is required. Large amount of insecticide is required. 5 kg of insecticide per hectare is required. Quickly give the answer. Yes, very good. So as it is an insecticidal gene, you need not to add any insect. Uh, insecticides, chemicals to the crops, right? Yes. So someone is asking to na um, name some fungi, penicillin, aspergillus, rhizopus. Okay. All these are fungi. Okay. Now tell me, strains of bacillus thuringiensis are used in producing or used in making which type of plants? Bacillus thuringiensis. Give the answer, children. Stains of Bacillus thuringiensis are used in making which type of plants? Bioinsecticidal plants, biomineralization, biometallurgical techniques, or biofertilizers? Yes, very good. It's bioinsecticide plants, right? Second question didn't understood the answer. The crops having cry gene. See, if any plant is having cry gene in it, cry gene in it, do you need to add chemicals to kill insect for such type of crops? No, no required. Insecticide. Insecticide is a chemical which kills insect, right? Yes, you need not to add insecticide. You need not to add any chemicals to kill insects to such crops because naturally the plants are having cry genes which makes toxins. So once the insect comes and uh, comes and eat the plant, it will die. 
because of the cryptoxin in it, right? Yes. Next, a plant expressing a gene from another organism is called what type of plant? Transgenic plant, clone plant, transform plant, or somoclonal variant? A plant having, use your common sense here. A plant expressing a gene means a plant which is having a gene from another organism. Like say BT cotton plant is having a gene, cry gene from current genesis bacteria, right? Yes. Transgenic, transgenic plants, transgenic animals. Transform. Okay, wait up. See, transform uh, is a mechanism where the cell has taken up. Okay. Transformed means, transform means cell taking up foreign DNA. Okay. Transgenic means a modified organism. The entire is modified. Okay. Very good. Now, this is very important. Cry 1AB controls. Cry 1AB controls. Tobacco leaf borer, nematodes, corn borer, all of the above. Corn borer, tobacco leaf borer, nematodes, all of the above. Cry 1AB genes, children. See, I told you, I have shown the image also. Don't get confused. Cry 1AB. No, all of you are wrong. Cry 1AB gene. Are Babri, children, what you're doing here? See, cry 1AB controls which type of insect? Corn borer. Cry 1AC and cry 2BR mean for cotton ball worms controlling, right? So your answer should be corn borer. Okay? Yes, children. So this is all for today's class. And in tomorrow's session, we'll deal with, you know, applications of biotechnology in medicinal field and application of biotechnology in diagnostics. And we also discuss some ethical issues which are associated with making genetically modified organisms. Okay? Yes, children, I hope you enjoyed session with me uh, this morning. Come back for next session tomorrow, same time. Okay, please do like, subscribe and share. Okay, thank you children. Bye, have a great day. Bye.